Hybrid teaching is challenging, but it's not impossible. For educators in Newport News Public Schools, finding the right balance between virtual learners at home and students learning in person is a necessary obstacle to overcome every day. It's been interesting taking on this challenge because, I mean, you get stuck teaching the same way. So it's nice to learn something new. I feel like it's been a big adjustment, um, especially for kindergarten, because we are so used to using so many manipulatives and games and hands-on things um, that we've really had to adapt in the way of using other things, other resources, um, in order to make that work. Hybrid learning doesn't mean less work for teachers. It actually means longer hours grading online submissions. It isn't easier work. Rather, it requires more focus and relies on collaborative planning. Hybrid isn't better or worse. It's just different. And it's really the only solution right now. But our teachers are professionals, ready to rise to the occasion. It's just new to us because it's the new thing that we're doing. But if you've been doing what you're supposed to be doing all along, hybrid learning is just a new vehicle by which to reach the students because some are, some are at home and some here at school. Teaching is teaching. Uh, what I'm amazed by is how effective it's been. I mean, uh, to force myself to zero in on the exact learning points that get captured by an electronic assignment, uh, and that targeted type of learning has also forced me to target uh, as well my instruction. At all grade levels and across every school in Newport News, teachers are using their talents and creativity to create amazing learning experiences for all their students, no matter where they're learning. In elementary school, most of the day is focused on the flip-flop method of teaching, where educators only have to focus on either their roomies or Zoomies at any given time. But during morning meetings and certain subjects throughout the day, teachers must teach their in-person and virtual students concurrently. At Discovery STEM Academy, the first grade team decided to utilize this concurrent model during their daily math lessons. I learned that my virtual kids couldn't really hear me that well with the mask, so then we got um, headsets with a microphone, so that really helped. And my kids here have to be ready on time when my virtual kids are signed into Zoom, so I have to make sure they're not distracted. So we've been, we've been forced to be creative in the way that we teach our little ones. At Dutro Elementary, the kindergarten team embraced their school's unique physical landscape and the power of collaboration to make four classes one focused pod of motivated learners. And one part of it is having a great team because our team of four teachers and then two assistants, we work together and because Detro is open concept and no walls, we opened up all of our furniture, got rid of all of the furniture that typically is in the middle of each classroom. So one teacher might be responsible for making sure everything is organized for the whole group reading for that particular week. And that's also the teacher who goes and does the whole group reading instruction for the whole pod. And then what goes on is after the whole group reading or after the whole group math, we dial back into our individual classes. At the middle school level, Teachers at Washington Middle School utilize the technology at hand to encourage students to share ideas and learn together. During art instruction, students are organized into small groups, allowing young artists to lend their individual talents to one piece of art. While English teachers use virtual breakout rooms to spark classroom discussions among students joining in online from home. At the same time, Students learning at school enjoy a lively classroom conversation with their hybrid peers. At Menchville High School, hybrid learning helps to level the learning curve for English language learners. Talented educators teach the universal language of mathematics to students who speak different native languages. Uh, I'm fortunate that my collaborative teacher is fluent in Spanish, but that's not a requirement and, and that's not ever expected to be a requirement. Uh, but I will talk for uh, anywhere from uh, one to two minutes, um, whether it's what we're going to do or what the lesson is, and then I will pause and I will mute and, and she will talk. 
and she's going to say exactly what needs to be said in her own words to communicate the same ideas that I just did. And then she'll stop and uh, she'll kick it back to me. Algebra 1 educators at Heritage High School crunched the numbers and found out that 1 was greater than 4. Why teach multiple classes of the exact same subject when these educators could work together and teach one epic class? We have what we call the Fabulous Four. We have two general education teachers, we have a special educator, collaborator, and I have a TIR, a teacher in residence, um, working with us. So it's four of us that's working together collaboratively with four adults in the class. You don't have to wait a long time. What we do, we split them up. We have two always talking to those that are on in virtual learning, and we have two that's in the classroom. So we're actually servicing all of the students. And it doesn't matter if we have students with disabilities, it doesn't matter if it's a general education student, all students are guaranteed to learn if they're present and if they are willing to learn. They are guaranteed to learn in our class. These schools are just a few of the shining examples of hybrid learning being successfully implemented. And while the main focus is student achievement and academic success, many underlying benefits help our educators thrive professionally and personally. I like the accountability with, with the assignments. I never did that before, but it's nice that the parents can actually know what their little six-year-olds are doing every single day. Whereas before, you know, maybe their kid would come home and say like, I don't know what I did, uh, adding or something. I'm learning different teaching styles, different teaching strategies. When somebody else is the one up there doing the lesson for everybody, it's so great to see these different, these different styles and these different mannerisms or these different strategies that they're using for engagement or for discussion. Every day you don't feel like putting on your cape and saving the day, but that's when you have someone that's in your corner that's speaking your language and saying, you can do this, and where you may not feel like doing it, I'll bring up the rear. We'll take care of it. So we bounce off of each other. We make sure that everyone is okay, mentally, socially, emotionally, not just the students, but the teachers as well. As Newport News Public Schools prepares for in-person learning five days a week in the fall of 2021, many of the lessons and techniques gained during hybrid learning will continue to shape the future of education. Um, it's forced me, frankly, to have a lot of good electronic assignments. In fact, all my assignments are electronic. And although it has admittedly been painful to build them, they're really good assignments. I mean, I'm proud of them. And I'm going to use them again and again. I feel like this year has brought us even closer together as a team and as feeling, feeling confident enough and um, comfortable enough to share ideas and to do all of those, um, that collaboration together, I feel like we could carry that over to next year too. To me, this year has really taught us a lot of things. It has taught us how to survive, but not just how to survive, but how to thrive in the surviving. I want to say hooray to the teachers and the staff and the faculty that took this as it's a new year, a new day. I believe we've done well. I do believe we've done well. We're here to save another year. Teachers, congratulations.